Hello there everybody guys and gals, it's Shiny Sparky 1-4 and welcome back to part 2 of the Acorn Tutorial series. So last time we talked about, well okay first I should actually open up a new one right? Let's go to File New, I'm going to go ahead and choose the same dimensions, you know just for the sake of this tutorial. Okay, last time we talked about importing images and the select tools as well as the shape tools. This time though I'm going to start by going and talking about layers. The reason why I'm doing this now is because you have to understand the difference between, let's say, when you make a shape, let's say a rectangle tool, pay attention over here in the layers. This is actually the background. You know, I can select the background. I'll go ahead and actually demonstrate that. And I can move it. That's the background. If I delete it, it'll basically become a transparent image. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. So this is the background. Now, I'll go ahead and name it that just so that it's easier for you guys. There. Okay. If you select, let's say, a rectangle tool, pay attention over here. A new layer should be automatically created. See that? I didn't do anything. It just created it by itself. Shape layer. Now, the reason it does that is because when you make a shape, the image is not rasterized. Like I said, um, I'm not a very good expert at rasterizing images and stuff about knowing that. But the way that you rasterize something is by going here. Layer, rasterize, shape layer. What this will do is it'll basically be like an imported image now you actually see some purple lines around the side don't worry about that that's kind of a glitch of acorn 4 I've noticed that it'll do that but once you move it it'll be gone okay so don't worry if that ever happens I mean it happens quite often but again don't worry okay but anyways as you can see now we no longer have the whole editing thing there is a way to edit it but I will talk about that later but the main reason why I wanted to do layers is because I want to move on and demonstrate the pencil and the brush so there, I deleted that. Now, when you select a brush, a new layer is not going to be automatically created, so you have to be more careful. For example, okay, the size is really big. Let's go ahead and lower it down to 40. Brush, okay. So let's say you draw something. There's a brush. As you can see, it didn't make a new layer. That layer was the one already there from when I did the rectangle. The reason it doesn't do that is because it's already rasterized. You can drag it and move it around, see that? But you can't edit it. You can edit the size, but I'll go ahead and do that now. The way that you edit rasterized images is by going down to Layer, Rotate, and Transform. And then you have a various amount of things you can do. The one I use the most is Scale and Rotate. This will allow you to resize it. You can also turn it. Holding down the Shift key will turn it to specific degrees I believe it's 45 degrees every single time and you can well, what else can you do let's see there might be more things you can do especially if you go down you know again I'll go ahead and press return if you go down to you know and select other things here but I'm not going to talk about that just yet so I'm going to go ahead and move it you know and it's the same thing if you do the pencil tool, once again, it's not going to create a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I should use a different color. Let's go ahead and undo that. I will select blue. Select the pencil. There you go. And again, it created it on the same layer automatically. So when you're making rasterized images, whether importing images or using the brush or the pencil, you have to be a bit more careful about your layers. You don't want to you know, mess it up. So again, once we select it, it's going to select the entire thing because it's already rasterized and because there's no way for it to tell, you know, something different. That's something that you really have to be careful about. Now, you can also come over here. Here's the eraser tool and you can, well, it's really skinny right now. Um, let's go ahead and do it to 20. Eraser. And there you go, and you can erase certain parts. But once again, you cannot, you cannot select like let's say you know a specific part you want unless you of course come down here and you know select that, go ahead and delete it, and it'll delete that part. I'm gonna go ahead and undo it and clear the selection. So I'm now I'll talk more about the layers. Things you can do. Right clicking will bring up this menu. If you are using, let's say, a magic trackpad, I believe it's using two fingers on the pad, something like that, that'll bring up the basically the right click menu. Now, you can first thing you can do is delete the layer, you know, 
there you go, the layer deleted, now it's just a background. I'll go ahead and undo that. Other things you can do are where you can duplicate the layer, you know, make more than one, where then you can delete this one and, you know, it'll still stay there. Useful for certain things, you know. Um, you can also, yeah, you can also make a new layer right from here, but it's actually easier if you just come down here to the plus, it'll make another layer, so you now have too many. Let's go ahead and delete it. Right click again, delete it. You know, there are other things you can do. Well, there are settings, and this is the same thing, whereas right clicking, but I just find right clicking a bit faster, you know, it's a bit more convenient. You can also move them around. Now, for this, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more layers just so I can show you. Let's say you want to drag this one up on top, just like that. See, you can move it around the order of the layers. The order of layers is extremely important in all image editors, as you already know because whatever's on top is going to be on top. If I move this on top, those pencil and brush things are going to be gone. Or they're going to appear to be gone, I should say. But they're not really gone, it's just that the background is blocking them because now it's on the top. See that? So if I move it back to the top, they'll appear again. Simple as that. Now, other things that you can do are, well, you can hide the layer. Clicking on this eye, it will hide everything on the layer. You know, that's very convenient to do. Other th another thing you can do is actually lock the layer, which is kind of important sometimes. If you lock the layer, you are prevented from, well, you know, you can't make any changes. If you try to select it, it's not going to let you. See, it's selecting the background automatically, even though I click here. See that? It's not going to let you because it's locked. So let's go ahead and unlock it. And, oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay. And another thing I do want to show you is, well, no, no, not that. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and do the text tool. How about that? The text tool is actually, okay, I'll click a place, and it'll make a new layer. So, again, it's not rasterized automatically. I'll go ahead and just put, um, hello. <laughs> there, simple as that. So, you change it by coming down here, you know, change it to green, magenta. I'll go ahead and do orange. How about that? And well, you know, once you do that, you can go ahead and come down here to rasterize shape layer. And again, it becomes, oh, I didn't want to do that. I'm sorry. I want to click it. There you go. And you can move it around. See that? Because it's rasterized. So again, you kind of have to understand the difference between uh, an, an image being rasterized and an image not being rasterized. It's a bit hard to explain, and even I'm not a huge expert on that, but that's basically how it goes, you know? The way that you move around a rasterized image or not move around, edit, I should say, is going down to layer, rotate and transform, scale and rotate, and once again, you can do everything. But of course, once it's rasterized, you cannot do other things, especially with text. You know, that's really hard. You I mean, you can't edit anymore because it's now a full image. So if we make, let's say, um, that's the clone. No, I don't want to talk about that one. But, okay. Another thing I do want to do is go ahead and do the magic wand select tool. Now, the magic wand, again, I believe, only works for rasterized sections. Now, you, you may be thinking, why did it only select that part and not the other part? Because we already know, know what the magic wand does. What it does is that it selects the same color throughout, you know, as long as there's no breaks in between. However, if we go and, you know, zoom in, even here it's kind of hard to tell. But there's actually different shades of orange, believe it or not. You select something, and the magic wand is saying that, well, these shades over here are actually a different shade of orange, so it's not technically the same color. Okay, the yellows are even greater like that. See that? But, you know, that's what the magic wand does. Now, once again, it's not going to work on images that are not rasterized, so you have to, you know, know the difference. But that's how it goes. Now, if we go down to, you know, add another image, let's say, go ahead and add this one. Okay, that one's... <laughs> I guess I'll talk about... Nah. Okay, but it's it's huge right now, okay? So again, images that, images that you import are automatically rasterized. So the way that you do that is you go down to scale and rotate. Oh, I didn't want to... Oh, oh, no, 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 no. That's a mess up by me. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. You want to go down to rotate and transform, scale and rotate. You want to find a corner. This thing is huge just like that 
what a large image it really is. But yeah, um, there you go. Now he's right in the middle, in front of everything. Go ahead and press return. I'll go ahead and show the magic wand once again. Click on, let's say that. See, it's saying that that's all the same shade. Come over here, it's saying that's the same shade of red. And you know, that right there is another shade. See that? I'll go ahead and undo that three times in a row or something like that, four maybe. Okay, so here we are, just made a cut. It's a new image. Um, what I want to show now is the whole saving thing. Now, saving an image, well, let's say um, we're going to go ahead and start with uh, a rectangle. We'll do that, and yeah, okay. So if you save it the first time, it's going to bring up this, of course. I'm going to go ahead and call this rectangle. The automatic format is Acorn. Now, Acorn is not a readable format by other programs, so you're going to have to change it to something else if you want to import it somewhere else. But the good news about saving it as Acorn is that you can actually continue to work on it. Let's say I save it as an Acorn. Hit save. Then I exit. And I go to open and I click on rectangle once again and open it. It's the same thing. See, it has all its layers over here and they will preserve. I can just keep putting more stuff on it. Let's see another circle here. See that? It works just fine. We're going to go ahead and save it. Now. I'm going to do save as and change it to, let's say, a PNG. That's a very good quality image, I would say. This one I'm going to call it rectangle.png. What's going to come up is this. Your layers will be lost. Yeah. What it's saying is that it's not going to be editable anymore, but it will be in a format that can be read by certain other programs. Like, let's say you want to import it to iMovie or iPhoto, you know, things like that. It'll work for that. But again, you cannot edit it anymore. A good thing to do is of course to save an acorn format and also to save a PNG format. Now if I go back to open, the rectangle.acorn will be here and the rectangle.png will be here. See that? Again the PNG, the layers are lost. They were all combined into one. Whereas if I open the acorn, it's all fine. Now a neat feature is that it's going to say, okay, like let's say you work on the project, you know, and then you get to a certain level, but you're not quite finished, but you save it as a PNG because you thought you were done, but then, but then you're like, oh, you know what, I'm not finished actually, oh, I want to work on it a bit more. So you know, you work on it a bit more, yeah, some lines, yeah, okay. Then you want to go, you know, to save as, and save it as a PNG again with the same name. What's going to happen is that, well, it's going to override it. There you go. Again, save without layers, and there you go. Now you exit. And it's a very nice and convenient way for that to work. See that? Now the PNG is updated with the lines. You can see right there, right there, right there. And that's pretty much how it works. So that's pretty much it. Next time in Acorn, or in the next part, I should say, I'm going to show a bit more complicated things, such as, you know, filters, maybe something from here, gradients, which is this is the gradient tool. I'll show something like that. So goodbye. Until next time.